And we are back. Back and at it again. Made some minor changes again off camera. We'll see if we can get something more interesting going today. I'm not sure what exactly. Never am. That's life. Um, but, 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 but. So I got the zoom. I got zooming features. We have zoom. We can scroll the mouse wheel to zoom. Um, ideally, I'd like that to be a little more smooth, but I'm not going to bother with that right now because it works perfectly fine. I also... Where, I, I don't remember where I left off yesterday, but... Oh, I, I changed the uh, controls into like a relative to the camera position type of thing. So you can roll your little self right into that ball and cup. I updated the texture of the cup. I don't even know if it's called a cup. I don't know. Messed with the physics a bit. You know, it's not perfect, but never will be. Um, what else? Oh, I... I got the putt to work more consistently. And the way I did that was... Um, in the update is where you should check for controls. So I call the handle controls in update. And I check for the, the left click. Um, oh, you know what? This should actually be... Get mouse button down. I wonder if that was actually causing some of the problems. Well, anyways, oftentimes you would, it would hit this piece of code and then it would do this. So it would just add a force. There were two problems with this, at least two problems. One, it wasn't consistent. So I was adding a force and it would always do different speeds. I wasn't sure why, but this seemed to have fixed it. So the first thing I tried was just set a variable to true called putted, just a boolean. Then in fixed update where all the physics are happening, that's where I check if that's true, then I apply the force and turn it back off. Then I noticed that by default, the add force function uses force mode dot uh, force, which is meant to be a continuous force, um, like as if you're holding down a button. I changed it to impulse, which is an instant force, and that combined with this seems to fix it. But now I'm actually wondering if I can just put this back into here and never set this to true so this fixed update won't happen. And now that I've changed this from get mouse button to get mouse button down for a single click, I wonder if that'll actually make a difference. So let's see how far we go the first time. Oop. Looks about right. Second time. Looks about right. It's exactly the same. What about diagonally? Looks okay to me. Yeah, I think... I don't think we need to use fixed update anymore. I think that was the problem. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take out fixed update. Um, yep, that's good. And I'm going to clean up a little bit. Here we go. Done. Okay. So we don't need to check this anymore. Besides, this is temporary code anyway. Um, eventually we're going to like swing the club and animate and like hit it at a certain frame. So it's not a big deal. Okay. What's next on the agenda? I know we have our blender file here. We can make modifications to the course. We can do whatever we just our heart, little hearts desire. I should probably make the ball look a little better. Let me look at my project and see if I actually have this as a texture somewhere or if it's just a material. It has to be a texture somewhere. Textures, there it is, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> so, there it is. <laughs> Looks like a ladybug. All right, so I think I'm just gonna use the texture paint in Blender and modify this dude here. Let's go to UV editing. Actually, no, let's go to, let's go to what? Isn't that though? This, that's what you call programmer art. All right, texture paint. Also, I really wish I knew how to like line these up perfectly. I know there's a way. 
I could re-unwrap the bowl. I could just start from scratch, actually. Let's see. Or I can just draw on it myself, actually. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, forget what forget what the other guy said. Let's let's do this. Last time I was having trouble with this, um what about what do you think about the color? Should I make it brighter or darker, different color altogether? Completely seamless. Yeah, let's do brighter. Like all the way bright. Like that. So let me just draw on it and see where the seam is. Actually, no, if I draw this way, I don't have to know where the seam is. It'll handle that automatically for us. Boop. Nice and pretty. It looks like a Ninja Turtle. Just out of curiosity, what if I do something like this? Oh, that's, that's actually not bad. I, I think I'm actually going to just barely fix it. Can I... I wanna, I could draw a happy face. That's not a bad idea. That's actually not a bad idea at all. I'll stick with the stripes for now. We can always make more than one. Okay, let's do the bottom. Like this. It's because I don't have them lined up that well. That's, that's fine. This is fine. It's like the dog meme where everything's on fire. This is perfectly fine. All right, let's let's do a little happy face. Boop, boop, boop. There, it's orange, dude. And we're gonna give this dude a red. Boy, I'm just I'm just feeling the art today. Why, why is this all black anyway? There we go. We're gonna give this guy a red S for shall sale. And some cat ears. <laughs> okay, that's enough. That's enough. Let's save this image. It's here. And here. This is the Unity location. Okay. Now we pop back into Unity and we have our ball. Except. Eh. Okay, here. Let's use the rotate tool. Yeah. There. <laughs> I'm gonna move him up a little bit, actually, just like that. Okay, nice and rotated. Okay, so we have our updated bowl. Um, now we just need to. Um, I'll draw some whiskers. We'll make them black. Because cat whiskers usually are white, actually, so let's make them white. Meow. There. Save and save as a copy to assets textures bowl. I now have whiskers. <laughs> All right, I gotta see what this looks like. Dude, that's my entire problem. That's why I never finish projects. I come up with a cool idea at first, and this wasn't even my idea. And then I just like run out of ways to code it. And there he goes. Oh yeah, look at this. Boop. You, you can tell I played this a lot. <laughs> okay. Oops. So that's that. I guess I could model a putting club. Let me find one. You don't call it a putting club, do you? Putting golf club. What do you call this? Just a putter? Putter. It's called a putter. You can see I play golf a lot. Mini putter. Yes, that's what I was looking for. Also, why is an Oculus Rift sensor on there? It's not, I know it's not, but. And it's, we're just gonna use one of these for reference. Let's go with this, whatever. In our models folder, we have a re reference images with our putter. All right, Blender. What a thing to be greeted with. All right, back to layout. So, 
Let's go over here, right where this 3D cursor is, and let's actually move that down on the Z axis. Where is it? Right there. Keep it at zero, 10 meters away. Okay. Well, I know we need a, let me turn off snapping. I know we need a cylinder, so I'll start off with that. No, 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 no. I need to import the image. Hold on. Add image. I think it does need to be a reference since it can be sized and stuff. The reference image of the putter. There it is. That's... This is actually not a bad size. Let me clone the ball, actually, and... Yeah, you know what? Not that. There we go. So here's the ball size. Let me move this thing up a little bit. So the ball, I don't know how big or, I think it's a little smaller than that. I mean, the putters, I think they're probably like, that feels about right, right? I'd say so. And let me, let me rotate this a little bit because I don't know how people typically hold I want to say they hit the ball more like this. So let's go with that. Sure. And on a side note, I think I have this course too small. Let's get to modeling. First things first, create a cylinder. Also, hold on. Let's turn this thing back to perspective. Uh, actually, no, I'll keep it orthographic because when I create a cylinder, I'm gonna move it to about here, um, squish it in quite a bit. Move and rotate it. Looks about right. Okay, so then we have our cylinder. That's the golf club handle. Here, I'm gonna move this back a little bit along the x-axis. There we go. Um, okay, it's bugging me. How do I lock a thing? How do I lock, I'm gonna have to Google it. There, right there, selectable. There. Can no longer click it. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty on this little dude. So what we want to do here is edit it. We need to select this ring of vertices here and extrude them. I think. Let me see what the top looks like. In fact, one of the things I'm going to view here is face orientation because blue is good, red is bad. That means the normals are flipped like this. That's the inside of the cylinder, which we cannot see if we zoom out a little more. So, okay. So I've got all this selected and nothing else. I don't think I have the top vertices selected. No, I do not. Zoom into those guys. Now, so let me delete this face. There. Now I'm going to make a separate object for the putter. Putter, putter part. The putter part. The part of the putter that's the putter part. And let me get out of edit mode. Let me create a new... Um, whatchamacallit right here. Just a cube. Keep it nice and simple. Um, I'm going to rotate that to here. And move it to there. Rotate it like this. And scale it just a bit. Then I'm going to move it to the proper X position that's shared by this cylinder's center point, which is zero meters. That makes sense. Exactly. That's no fun. Uh, and then I'm going to shrink it down on the X axis only to be about that thick. Okay. Back to orthographic view. Uh, then Yeah, then we just get to work extruding stuff, really. All right, 
Here we go. Okay, so extrude to here. Scale it down, but not on the x-axis. Do that again. Rotate it a bit. Scale it down a bit, but not on the x-axis. Do it again. Rotate it a bit. Scale it down. Move it. Rotate it a little more, I'd say. Scale it down a little more, even. And one more. Um, that'll be done by smooth shading. I'll show you that in one second. These need to actually... These, I think these need to go like more here. And then these guys can scale in even more. And like that. Then we have a... Oh, I forgot to... Forgot to lock the X on that last scale there. Whoops. As tempting as that may be. And just just because um no actually that should be fine okay let me move these down a bit oh what in the world i thought i locked that axis there we go okay and then this side Extrude, rotate, move, and I guess I'll keep the scale, looks about right. Extrude, scale, extrude, scale. And that's definitely part of a putter. Um, I don't like the positioning of these. Okay, now, one other thing I'm going to do is um, actually move these to here and move these to here. Um, that way I can make this part a lot easier. This part actually needs to be round. Here's what we're going to do. Extrude it. Rotate it. Scale it. Move it. Bop it. Okay, now we have that. Let's see what we got here. Subdivide these. And then select this ring loop. And move it down. That's one way to do it, but I don't like dragging it like that. Whatever. Okay. Now these... Hopefully, can be beveled. Not really, I mean, kind of. That might, you know what? I think that does work. Then I just need to take these, expand them out a little bit. No, I need to do one other thing. I need to select all these vertices. And I need to delete, I need to merge, actually, by distance. Okay, yeah, there we go. So I removed two vertices, so that was it. Then, I need to take these guys again, scale them on the x-axis. There we go, much better. And... 
why not subdivide these lines so we get more vertices in there smooth them nope sorry not on the z axis That's better. Yeah, that is actually a lot better. Yeah, that's great. I like that. Then I'll just use proportional editing when I drag this guy. And, uh... Not that much, though. On the x-axis only. Actually, no, hold on. So like both of these scale them proportionally. Yes. Yeah, that that's looking much better. A little too much. Let's say that's good enough. Then we simply take all of these vertices and we extrude them up to there. Rotating them and moving them over. Rotating them again. Like so. Now this time I actually can get away with not connecting them, I guess, since this is a solid face at the end, at the top. Okay. That is good enough for me. So if I hide this reference image, we have a, a putter. We have a putter. And I do think I will shade this whole thing smooth. Looks better like that in my opinion. Yeah. This too. Woo woo! Now we just need to color it, or rather material it and the handle will have its material um putter handle thanks base color it it actually should be gray or silver i'm almost thinking like mm, let's make it metallic fully metallic and um not very rough just a little bit rough I don't know how specular it should be, or if that even matters with roughness. I always get confused on that stuff. And that's good enough for now. It'll reflect its light around it. And this guy, if uh, it doesn't matter, but I'll just make him green just to be consistent. Um, no. No, I won't. Putter. Head. Putter head. Base color. Let's make it purple. Good enough. Then we just have to combine the two things. Is that control J? Yes. Call it a putter. And there you have it, folks. Let's move its origin to geometry so it centers that. Although that's... Then the cursor actually should be at X zero. Whoops. Cancel that. Whoops. Don't cancel that. Cursor should be X0. Zero. 0. The Y is... We'll get to that. Uh, and the Z is good where it's at. Then from... Whoops. Then from the... This way. Um, yeah, right there looks good. Okay. Then all I can do is snap the origin to the 3D cursor. Turn back on the collection visibility, put this back in the collection, and yay, I guess we have a putter. Okay, save scene, export, selected objects only, um, putter, and everything else should stay the same. Then in Unity, if we go to our project, nope, yeah, project, models, we can drop our putter in here, and there it is. 
No, you know what? I think there's something weird about this. So hold on. The putter's handle. Yeah, you have to set this like yourself. So to do that, I don't know why it doesn't bring that over, but um, materials extract materials, I think it is. Okay, that's better, I think. Yeah. And then the putter handle, we'll say metallic. Yeah, that's better. Give us some smoothness. Yeah. And I don't care about the head for now. Cool. Then, we actually need to replace this stupid transparent cylinder with the real putter. Okay. Hierarchy. Um, I guess you can copy it for now. All I have to do is copy the pasted values. Ooh. What I should have done is control A, apply scale, then export again. And then when I copy this thing's coordinates over, that looks a little better. Just have to rotate it better. I think. And look at this, it actually kept the uh, origin point. How do I... Okay. There we go. Obviously we can keep it, you know, constrained to that one circle. But... When I rotate around now, I'll have to rotate. No, this that's not, this actually shouldn't be that bad. Let me delete the putter. Let me remove this ball. Delete this putter. Let's move the putter under the putter plane. Then, and obviously we can, you know, if you're right-handed, what do you want it to look like? Or if you're left-handed, should you, you know. Most people are right-handed. I'm going to leave it that at that for now and let's code a little bit finally um so when we update the putter position let's see what this looks like first of all before we so we <laughs> just so we know we, what we need to do here oh right there's also that i need to subtract a y value bar putter offsets equals new vector three zero negative 2.2 f zero for now yeah it does not need to be subtracted is what i should have said there we go that's where i wanted it yeah okay now we just have to subtract the um What if I just what if I just mirror the angle? Like okay, up here is zero, then this should be zero, right? Down here is well, hold on. I don't think that's accurate. Let me run this again. Up here is zero. Down here is I mean negative one eighty, but it doesn't matter. I don't think. Uh, let, let, let's find out. So, from Euler angles, actually, hold on. What's this? Deprecated, okay. Deprecated, deprecated. Okay, everything's Euler now. Uh, new vector three. And. <laughs> We'll pass in the putter.transform.x, the angle, and the putter.transform.z. Uh, sorry, dot rotation, dot root, dot rotation, dot z. Nope, not rotate. There we go. Let's not get our hopes up. Okay, okay, that's weird. That's weird. 
But that's a start. Why is it so weird? <laughs> oh! Oh. Well, I think I need to do transform.eulerangles.x. The rotation is the quaternion. So that's not going to give me the same values that I expect. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, okay. It's weird, but I think I just need to flip it. <laughs> so we're getting there. Negative angle. And will it blend? It blends. It totally blends. We got the thing doing the thing. All right. Oh yeah, that looks great. I mean, it looks awful, but it looks great. <laughs> that calls for a hole in one. Well, that was worth it. <laughs> All right, now I am actually in ending the stream. And uh, yeah, have a good night, dude. Catch you tomorrow or whenever, later.